This might come off as a bit of a brag, but I have looked the exact same for the last 10 years. I don't know if that's a brag or not. But I wanted to share with you some tiny habits that have helped keep me strong, lean, just overall healthy, with very little effort, which any good minimalist would want. These should be very simple and easy to add to your life. All right, before we get to the exciting ones, these boring ones actually make a really, really big difference. Starting off with knowing your target calories. And no, I do not track my calories. I did that for a couple months uh, to kind of get an understanding of different calories, how much things are. I just had no idea that like, you know, a tablespoon of oil is equal to like most of a banana. Like I didn't know how many calories were in the things I was consuming. And once I was able to learn that, I never have to track calories again, but I keep a general understanding of what will make me gain weight, what will make me lose weight, what will make me maintain weight. I'm not some health expert, but losing weight is, is pretty simple. If you consume less calories than you burn, you will lose weight. And sometimes the difference between gaining weight and losing weight is like a very, very small thing. It's that very small snack that you don't really think about. Actually, I actually have a pretty simple formula that I stole that helps me kind of do whatever I want with my weight. For me, if I'm trying to maintain my weight, I do 17 times my goal body weight. So my goal body weight right now is about 180 pounds. I times that by 17 and that's going to equal about 3,060 calories per day in order for me to maintain my weight. However, I'm not exactly on that. That's just like kind of general guidelines. But if I'm trying to lose weight, I will drop that down from 17 to 14 or 15. So let's say 180 pounds times 15. It's about 2,700 calories or about 2,500 calories if I want to go uh, extreme and try to lose some weight without losing much muscle. To be perfectly honest, I stole this math. Uh, from a financial influencer named Kino Body. He's also stayed very lean for a very long time and just kind of following these guidelines has made it very, very easy for me to just try to be relatively close to these numbers. Now, another thing that helps me stay close is the one, one rule. I have tried going vegan. I've tried being like carnivore. I've tried a bunch of different diets before. And this hack is what makes me feel the best. Now, I think it's important to realize that some people feel great being vegan. I got super, super sick. Um, some people feel great going carnivore that you might not feel good about that. Like there's a bunch of different diets out there. One diet is not right for everybody. Everybody feels different. So listening to your body and, and seeing what makes you feel the best is really helpful. This is what makes me feel the best, might not make you feel the best, but generally I try to eat a lot of protein. There's again, a bunch of different math on this. Some of it says, you know, uh, 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 grams per pound of gold body weight. So if I'm uh, 180 pounds, that might mean, you know, like 100 to 130 grams of protein is generally what I try to shoot for. So that being said, if I'm trying to have a lot of protein in a day, I wanna keep my calories down under those numbers, then I try to use the one-to-one -one rule. So this means that if I'm looking at, let's say a, a bar, a protein bar, or like any meal where I'm checking out the calories, I'm gonna look for a one-to-one -one ratio of calories to protein, or 10 to one, I guess. Where if a bar is, let's say 200 calories, I wanna have at least 20 grams of protein in there. Or this bar right here has 12 grams of protein and 210 calories. So I know this is just not gonna be the highest protein per calorie. I do have carbs and all that stuff, but this is just a general guideline where if I'm looking for something high protein and I don't know like what type of calories are good for it, I just use this rule. Keeps things really simple and I always feel more full and more energetic when I eat this way. You can use it or not. Now let's go into the fun ones. We all hear about these different uh, workout programs. Some of them are super extreme, but for me, I have found that keeping it very simple for a very long time has been uh, what's allowed me to, to stay in relatively good shape for a pretty long time. So I guess the point here is like to work out consistently um, and not do extreme things. As somebody who runs a couple of businesses and then also has two kids, it's very easy to get busy. And the first thing that most people cut out is working out and exercising, um, even though that's really important for mental health, physical health, a bunch of things. It's generally the first thing to go. And honestly, even for me, who's been working out for 10 plus years, it can be hard to be consistent and actually know what to do in order to progress. And that's why I've actually started using an app called Trainwell, who is also the sponsor of this video. Now this app gives you a personal virtual trainer. Mine's name is Rod, really cool guy. We had like an onboarding call where he asked me a bunch of questions. We talk about my shoulder injury, what I like to do for our workout, what my goals are. I've never worked with a personal trainer before, so this was really cool for me to kind of get some personal feedback and really hone in on what my goals are. And then also talking about what I can realistically commit to. So for me, it was three workouts a week for about 45 minutes each workout. And then he built me an entire 
training program based around all the things that we've talked about, based around my injuries, my time limitations, and all that type of stuff. And the cool thing is, if you don't like your trainer, you can just switch to a different one. I really like mine, but you can totally do that. Then I can just like go to the gym and it literally walks me through the entire workout with examples of how to work out, how to do the exercises, how many reps to do, what type of weight to do. I can literally just zone out and follow along because this is telling me exactly what to do, which is I think something a lot of people struggle with when you get to the gym, there's so much equipment, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to do the exercise correctly. This totally takes care of all that. Plus there's the accountability aspect where I missed a workout and you know, he sent me a message. It's like, hey dude, saw you missed a workout, what's going on? And that's actually really helpful for me to have that accountability aspect. And then also you can give feedback right on the app of like, oh, this exercise hurt me, this exercise felt good, it's too easy, it's too hard. And he will actually adjust the workout exactly for what is gonna be best for me. Trainwell was actually ranked highest out of all the personal trainer apps in 2023 by Forbes. The first people who sign up with my Trainwell link, which is trainwell.com, net slash Gabe Bolt. We'll get 14 days for free. If you've been struggling, this can really, really help you. I really loved it. Check them out, link down below. Go for a walk or at least try to do more walking. I don't know about you, but I am a fat kid at heart. So I really like to eat a lot of food and actually going for consistent walks can help me eat more food because the more calories that I burn, the more food that I can eat. So walking is actually one of the better exercises in order to help um, boost fat loss. Walking for like 30 minutes can help you burn 150 calories. If you do an average of 10K steps a day, that's like 400 or 600 calories, something like that, which is honestly huge. So if there's one small habit that you can add, it would be going outside and trying to walk every single day for at least 30 minutes. That's something I try to do. You can listen to a podcast, try not to get hit by cars. On top of like the, the calorie burning aspect, it's been really great for my mental health just to be outside more. So many cars. So even if it is not super long, try to go for a walk pretty much every day. Track your sleep. As somebody who has um, two kids, sleep has been horrible recently, but keeping track of my sleep is something that really helps keep me uh, accountable and really has made me make a few shifts in my life. It's pretty much I use like one of one of the, the rings out there. This is an ultra human ring, but you can use whatever. And I started to actually track my sleep. And by doing that, I realized that A, I was going to bed too late because I was spending time on my phone and stuff. So I stopped um, doing that and I set a bedtime for myself where my phone had to go away. And that really uh, allowed me to sleep more. It was also really cool to see when I had um, bad sleep, what were the things that I did the day before that kind of led to some of that? Now, some of it was out of my control with the kids and stuff, but some of it was by choices that I was making, either the foods that I was eating, the things that I was doing before bed, or just like having my phone in bed. All of those have really led to me feeling horrible because I didn't have enough sleep. So if you just do this one tiny change of really prioritizing your sleep because it affects everything about the rest of your day. If you can just make that little shift by tracking it or even without you know, something digital, just really paying attention to it and prioritizing it, it has literally made the rest of my life better. By the way, if you're looking for some other habits, I have a list of 50 habits that can really improve your life down below. It's free, download it, get some inspiration, check it out. Declutter your life. Are you stressed? Because that is something that happens to me quite often and one tiny habit that has really helped reduce that stress and helps me sleep better, uh, be more consistent with the working out and the eating and everything else is actually decluttering something. I know this doesn't really make sense for like a, a health thing, but if you declutter your, you know, your wardrobe, your schedule, your office, your bedroom, whatever it is, if you start decluttering things, it really, really helps me have some mental calm, some mental space. It reduces my stress levels a lot. I don't know, I don't know if there's any science behind that, but I feel way less stressed when my house is clean, it's tidy, when I don't have a billion things on my schedule. When I actually have my home clean and clutter free and my life clean and clutter free as much as possible, my stress levels go down so, so, so much. In fact, it's like one of my go-to things. If I'm stressed about stuff, I'll just like clean up the kitchen. If I'm stressed about stuff, I'll just get rid of a bunch of things in my office and clean it up. And then I just like feel more at peace. So if you're stressed, try like using that energy or that anger or that anxiety or whatever, and like clean something and I will bet that you will feel better. And then and it might help you sleep better, might help you do your job better, might help you do something better. Let's give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, then this one also has some great habits that you can check out, as well as checking out Train Well with the link down below if you're interested in like, um, you know, bettering your health and stuff like that. So yeah, check them out and I'll see you next week.